Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Hello, everyone. And for those of you that are um, here for day two, welcome back. And if you are here for the first time, can you give me a quick thumbs up, aka you did not join us yesterday. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. I do have a few new folks in the room. Well, hello and welcome. Let me introduce myself real quickly. My name is Jessica Swan, and I am the community manager for the Infiniscope project. Uh, Infiniscope is based out of Arizona State University. We are part of the Center for Education through Exploration. And with me here today, I have Sina Kirk. She's to my left on the screen. Sina, I'm Sina. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> um, I'm the uh, marketing and communications manager for the Infiniscope project. So uh, it's my job to try to get all of our awesome resources out to awesome folks like you. Yep. And uh, we are both former classroom teachers. I was actually in the classroom for nine years. However, I have been out of the classroom for 12 years. Don't judge me harshly. Um, so I have been working in this uh, NASA world for the last 12 years, very specifically working with educators just like yourself, um, making connections, building relationships. And it is my job to build a, a community of practice around these digital tools that we have here. Uh, Sina, you wanna tell them a little bit about your teaching experience mm -hmm. too? Yeah, um, so I taught uh, middle school and high school science uh, for about 10 years. So um, eight of those, seven of those, seven of those were in Washington state uh, where I went to university. And then um, I spent three years teaching abroad at an international school in Northern Italy. And I have been uh, with Infiniscope now for about four years. I've been out of the classroom for about five. All right. So with the general introductions, let's go ahead and talk about Turret. So Turret is, it's a fun tool. I get excited. Uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> like, we were super excited about the Turret tool. And uh, we have been working with the Turret tool now for about a year and a half. Um, and is gaining a lot of traction and it is very simple to use. So simple to use that when we really get into it today, we literally have a video to share with you, which is build a tour in five minutes. So um, let's go ahead and click for the next page. All right, I'll do a quick overview of what Infiniscope is. So uh, we are actually a NASA funded project. And as I said, we're based out of Arizona State University. We are a digital teaching network. And what that means is, is that we create digital learning experiences that are all NGSS designed and aligned. But in addition to this, they're also what we call adaptive and interactive. More often than not, when you run into digital products, you typically will find that the products you're working with are more interactive. So there's just simulations. But there's nothing wrong with a simulation. They're very educationally sound. You use them a lot in my classroom. Um, but what we do is we add a layer of adaptivity to these simulations that allow us to help guide the learning of the student. So it allows us to be able to identify knowledge gaps, misconceptions, we can provide students some agency. So it's a little bit of a choose your own adventure style. So they can choose their own adventure through these agency choices. Or if we identify a knowledge gap or misconception, we can push them down alternative pathways to help fill those knowledge gaps. Um, the technology that we use to create all of these digital learning experiences, we make these tools available to the educators that are in our network. So the, the Turret tool is one of these tools that we use, we're making available to you for free. Because we are part of the NASA ecosystem, everything that we're talking about today is totally free to you. Um, ultimately, what we're trying to do is to catalyze creators. We want people to not just be consumers, but also creators of this digital content that they're sharing with their students in the classroom. And then finally, as a result of that, we do offer training to all of our educators on how to use best practices in creating this digital content and in place-based learning experiences. Next slide, please. And ultimately, it is our goal here in the ETX Center to transform learning, to embrace exploration of the unknown and at scale. So the reason that we have chosen digital is because it enables us to go at scale. Everything that we build uses an exploratory um, 
features. So if you can go to the next screen for me, please. And we call this the exploration learning loop. Uh, we as educators know that good exploration starts with curiosity. We pique our students' interest. Uh, we engage them, if, we, if you will. Um, and that engagement will then drive some sort of exploration. And that exploration then drives some form of discovery. And more often than not, in science, discovery ultimately will lead to further curiosity. So within our own center, the ETX Center, regardless of the product that we are creating, whether we're working on the Infiniscope project or we're working on the Gates project or we're working on an HHMI project, whoever it is that we're working with, we apply this ETX, this exploration learning loop to everything that we design. Um, but we as educators know, especially science educators, we're familiar with this learning loop as the inquiry model. It's you know, engagement, it's exploration, it's explanation, it's elaboration, evaluation. So um, this is not new to any of us. So it's kind of cool to be able to see it happening within our own world here too. All right, next screen, please. All right, so I think what I wanna do uh, before we really dig into the details of Torrid, it's probably a good idea to do a quick um, a, a quick tour of the website so we can show you where you can find Tourit, um, you, that you have to create an account and then you can find it and open it up. So Sina, can you stop screen sharing here real quick and then head over to the Infinoscope site and just kind of walk them through how to find it. How to find Tourit? How to find Tourit, yep. Okay, got it. Okay, get ready here. While we wait, you can tell where people are, what where they're from, what region they're from, based on their dialect and the way that they say the word Turit. Do they <laughs> pronounce the O-U or do they say it Turit? <laughs> I will save us from that by sharing my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is uh, the Infiniscope homepage, infiniscope.org. Point out a couple of things here. Um, this is where you can uh, create an account or log into an existing account that you have. I'm going to go ahead and log in here, and you'll notice that the icon here changes. So instead of being gray, it's blue, it's slightly larger. That's your cue that you are, in fact, logged in. And then there's also this toggle over here that I'm going to point out. So when you first get to the site, it will be off. Um, this is just like for students to come here and other people who maybe aren't educators and aren't in, interested in the particular educator um, benefits that we have. But since you all are probably educators, you're going to toggle that on. You'll notice that you get um, the community um, space pulled in here. I think my internet's just a little slow. You'll see some stuff populate there. You can see the upcoming events here. But I think what Jess wants me to show you is this little uh, nine dot toolbar up here. So when you click this, you can now access Turret. You'll see all of the projects that you have. Yep, yeah, that's the easy way to do it. And as mentioned before, if you have not created an account yet with Infiniscope um, to actually play in Torrit today, you will have to request an account. Everything we offer is totally free, so don't worry, you're not joining any sort of freemium model sort of uh, membership. All right, so back to our slide deck. And next. the next page. All right, so um, I do have to take just a moment to acknowledge there may be a couple people here online who were beta testers for Turit. So if you were a beta tester, that means that we gave you an, a, a Tourit account before the new Infiniscope website went live. So if you are a beta tester, raise your hand. I feel like maybe Diane was a beta tester. Mm -hmm. Oh, Laura was a beta tester. Maybe. Aaron, oh, okay. We have enough beta testers here online. Okay, if you are not a beta tester, you can mentally check out for the next two minutes. We're gonna focus directly on our beta testers. So basically what we're gonna tell you is you have two Tourit accounts. 
and we have a way for you to merge those two accounts together. It does require you remembering your beta tester login. If you can't remember that, then we can work on that after this. But here's, uh, can you go ahead and, and <laughs> yep, Diane's like, ha, like she's gonna remember that. All right, go ahead and hit play. So there is no sound to this, but it does walk you through. So you're gonna go to tour it. And so there's the list of the projects. You're gonna click on that little gray button in the middle that is your user. When you click on it, you'll see that there's this little section called merge accounts and it literally has all of the directions that are here. Now, here's the trick. You have to have both accounts open at the same time. So you'll have to log into your beta account first and then go over to Infiniscope and log into your Torrent account with Infiniscope. You're gonna grab this merge account token that was just created. Can you slide back for just a moment in the video? Oh, it's fine. Yep, here we go. All right, so, oh no, this is still the token. All right, so you're gonna hit that click, you're gonna click that get merge token and it's gonna give you a, yeah, there it is. It's gonna give you this little URL thing oh. copy. What? Sorry. sorry, I clicked and it took me to the next. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so the token, you're going to grab it from your beta account, you'll create it in your beta account, you will copy it from your beta account, and then you want to paste it in your Infiniscope account. We've probably made it sound way more complicated than it truly is. Um, we're going to post the, I have our YouTube channel or YouTube links, I'm going to post them over here in chat here shortly. Okay. So that's why, like Diane sent me an email earlier and said, hey, what happened to all of my stuff? It's probably because it's sitting in your beta account. Okay, anyone who was not beta, come back to me now. So now we should have the whole group back together. Give me a thumbs up if you're here. That's good. All right, good. All right, welcome back everyone. Okay, so remember I told you, this is super easy. It's, it's almost silly how easy tour it is to use. So what we're gonna do is show you the five minutes to create a tour video. And then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the things that we know are gonna be happening this year development wise. So new, um, new features that are coming down track. Um, and then talk a little bit about training that we'll have available this summer and cameras and all sorts of stuff. So go ahead and hit play, Sina. You're gonna need volume on this one. but we can't hear your computer audio. Hold place. Working on technical things. Okay. And... Sorry, I need to sound. I think we're good now. Okay. No sound. All right. I'll be right back. You want me to try it? Sure. I'll do my settings while you try. Okay. Sounds like a plan. You guys hear that? Yes. Perfect. 
Tourant creates an interactive environment where you can use digital storytelling to convey a sense of place about a location. This video will show you the steps to making a basic tour and is paired with media assets for you to replicate the tour. Once you are familiar with the tool, we recommend learning more about place-based learning through Infiniscope's workshops and resources to build quality narrative tours that will engage your audience. To start a project, click the plus icon. Then name your project by clicking on the pencil icon next to the largest letters and typing the name. You can change the name at any time. Upload a JPEG panorama by either dragging the file into the Upload Panoramas field or by clicking to browse and find the file. Spherical panoramas, or panos, that are 360 degrees with a high resolution will work best but there is a 10 megabyte size limit for any file added to a tour. You can then rename the panos. You can also delete existing content, like this blank panorama used as an example. Next, click on the panorama to open the panorama editor. Here you can view, edit, and add hotspots like media and links to the pano. To edit the information presented by the pano, click on the pencil icon to open a pop-up window where you can name the pano, type a description, and even add sound like MP3 audio. Click on the green check on the top right when finished adding the information. To maneuver in the tour, Click and drag to change the view. Scroll up and down to zoom in and out. Click on the mountain icon to set a starting position or default view within the pano. To add hotspots, like media and links, to the pano, click on the Add a Hotspot button. A pop-up menu will appear. There are many kinds of hotspots to choose from within the tool, as seen in the drop-down menu. For the first hotspot, let's connect this pano to a second one. You can then rename the pano and move the hotspot. At any point, you can preview your project by clicking on the binoculars icon to preview the project in the browser window. Though there are thumbnails to access panos at the bottom, the hotspots can guide viewers in a non-linear way as well. To go back to the editor, close the tab when finished previewing, as was done here off-screen. Let's add some more hotspots to this example. To move to another pano, use the double arrows or move with a hotspot. Double click to add the hotspot. You can also drag it to a better location. Use the drop down to choose the type of hotspot to add and fill in the information associated with that hotspot. For a text hotspot, select the button from the menu or double click. The hotspots here were added by double clicking. An image hotspot can take JPEG, PNG, and GIF files. You can also add PDFs. And you could add videos using either Vimeo or YouTube. You must make sure the YouTube or Vimeo videos are not set to private for others to be able to view them in the tour. Finally, websites can be added. Some websites do not have permissions to be viewable in tools like this, so you should check them in preview mode to make sure they work. You can see a menu of all the hotspots added by clicking on the Toggle Hotspots Table button on the Pano menu to the right. This menu will allow you to see each hotspot within the menu, and also, if you click on the menu item, it will show you the hotspot within the Pano. Once you have edited your pano, you can add more panos to the project by leaving the editor and clicking on the panoramas in the navigation bar. Once you are ready to share your tour, click on the share button in the menu to get a shareable link. The link to the project will be shown in a pop-up window, allowing you to copy the link to the clipboard or open the tour in a new tab. Now that your project is publicly shareable, you will see a couple of new icons appear in the toolbar. You can make your tour private by clicking on the Make Private button, and the link will no longer work. 
By clicking it again, it will be public using the exact same link as before. If you make changes to your tour after making it public, click on the Update Changes button to save those changes and push them out. These changes will be updated using the same link. And that's how you can make a tour using Tourit. This was to make a basic tour to get your feet wet. To take your tour to the next level, use Infiniscope's workshops and resources to develop a sense of place, increase accessibility and inclusivity, learn media strategies, and more. For more information and support, visit infiniscope.org. All right, it's just that easy. Well, thanks for coming. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> we'll do more. We will do more of this. All right, so it's pretty intuitive, don't you think? It seems like you just kind of click and drag and drop some buttons and you can put in a variety of media. Um, you can create a, a story that goes with this. Um, you can choose how students will navigate through your tour. Um, when you're thinking about tours, you want to think about, you know, I mean, you can literally make anything a tour. We've seen teachers create uh, their classroom as a tour, as like an orientation to where do you find lab materials. We've seen them use um, their atrium so that they can share all of the learning that they have within that particular atrium. Then they've got things that they've done across the world. You know, I've visited this location and I know my students, you know, it's very relevant to the things that I teach with my students in the classroom. And so they create a tour around that. Um, museums that they visit, anything can, can technically be a tour. So the, the sky is really the limit when it comes to creating a tour. Now, in this next six-ish months, it's going to be sometime in the fall. Go ahead and click, Sina. So in addition to... Oh, You're sharing. I'm the one that's in charge, aren't I? Go this way. We're okay. I'm not skipping, right? Okay. Um, in the next six months, so with this fall, there are additional features that will be added to tour it that currently don't exist, but will enhance the experience. Uh, one thing that we have heard from a number of teachers is, man, it would be great to have a database of these 360 degree views that we could just pull from. So we're working on creating a database of all of the assets that we have created over time that you can, you can leverage. Um, there's also going to be an option to be able to switch to VR mode. So if you happen to use VR in your classroom, in your school, you could create a tour that students could experience in the, in a, in the VR mode. Uh, there's also going to be a switch between the present and interact mode. So in this case, if you ever use Google Cardboard, it's a similar uh, option as what you had in Google Cardboard. And you can add collaborators. So currently, as, as you create a project, it's your project. There's really not any way for, let's say, Sina and I wanted to create a tour of all things in Finiscope. I, I really can't add Sina to it and both of us work on the project together. But in the fall, you'll be able to add collaborators and work together on, on a tour. And then finally, um, this doesn't really necessarily connect today, but next Tuesday, if you come and, and get a preview of the new authoring tool that we're creating, um, that authoring tool allows you to put other web pages within it, and then you can control what students are doing. So for example, let's say that I've created a tour of my home and I want them to explore everything in my hallway before they can move to my living room. Well, we've set the, we've set the new version of tour it up so that you can control that view and that they have to do everything in that space before they can move on. So that gives you, uh, it, it allows you to be able to uh, really kind of structure and scaffold a tour for students if you wish to, if you choose to do so. Okay, next, me, it's me, I'm in charge. Uh, <laughs> and oftentimes we also have questions from teachers about capturing their own 360 degree images. So there are a few options that are available. Um, one is, is that we have a handful of 360 degree cam cameras that are available. These are available for checkout. I'll drop a link in the chat if this is something that you're interested in, but please do not complete that form until you are actually ready to use the camera. We do have a one month limit on, on how long you have the camera checked out because we do have other teachers that are gonna be requesting the cameras. Um, there are also 
excuse me, and also a variety of apps that are available. These typically have very nominal fees. I think, you know, something like $10. Um, we try really hard to provide whatever we can for free. So please use the checkout camera system. Um, but if you are okay with a nominal fee, then maybe an app is the way to go for you. And then finally, there are actually some pretty inexpensive models that are available. The one that we have for checkout is really inexpensive. I think we, I think we spent maybe 250, maybe 300 on it. Um, and you can create an exponential number of tours and uh, 360 degree views with that particular tool. And it's not really, you don't need the ultra high resolution camera because as you heard earlier, the, the sterichals, the 360 degree images are really limited to 10 megabytes. So you already have a limitation on the, on the size of the image that you're using. So you don't need to have a top end camera to capture the, these views. Okay. And wanna make sure that you guys know, um, as was mentioned in the video, we do offer training over the summer. The training that we offer is really about creating these rich, deep, place-based learning experiences. There is a lot of pedagogy that is behind experiencing place and using place as a learning tool. So we won't focus as much on how to utilize the tool. We'll talk a lot about leveraging place-based learning with the tool to create these deep, rich learning experiences for your students. So make sure you mark your calendars. We set aside June 27th to 29th for that particular training. And then from here, we're ready to start getting muddy. So our ultimate goal for the rest of our time together is to just get you into the tool, give you some resources that you can kind of tinker with. You can ask questions. It's just gonna be a live Q&A from here. So let me stop sharing and I can go ahead and start dropping some resources. So while you're waiting for resources from me, if you're not already logged in and you don't have Tourit open, that would probably be a good idea. All right, so I'm gonna drop a Google Doc here. There's the Google Doc. And when you click on the Google Doc, you should see a variety of resources. I'll do a quick screen share to show you what you should see. So you're gonna see a lot of the assets that were featured in the video. So you've got some sound, you've got some images, you have some panoramas, you have a few things that you can work with um, to create a, a, a sample tour. So what we'll have you do is to go ahead and log into tour it and you can grab some of those assets and start plugging and playing and then let us know what kind of questions you have as you run into them. I will also, while you all are doing that, go and grab the two video clips <coughs> that we presented here. So if you want to go back and watch those, you can. So as you're navigating, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the chat or to just uh, pop onto the microphone and, and ask us. That's what we're here for. Okay, incoming is the video about merging your account. Ah. Jennifer with the question, are students able to create their own tours? With our version of Tourit, they cannot. So our version of Tourit is associated with teacher logins only. That doesn't mean that there's not another version that exists out there. So I can, if you're really interested in having uh, students create their own virtual tours, there's another, uh, there's another project that we are associated with that they integrate it within Canvas. So you have to have a Canvas LMS 
to do it. Awesome. I'll get you the link for that too. Um, let me get my last video posted here. Monday.com make. Can I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. Tour creates an interactive oh, environment okay. where you can Sounds use digital stories. There we go. Go for it. Which question? <laughs> so once you have created a tour, um, you can just share it with anyone, like any students, or do they have to be logged into your tour, you your Infiniscope with, website somehow? You can share it with anyone. It is considered a public link. It's not a searchable link, but it is a publicly, it's public on the web. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, here is the YouTube video for Tour It in Five Minutes. I'm going to share my screen for just a second here uh, to get Paula into um, into Torrent. So Paula, once you are at Infiniscope and you are logged into your account, you want to make sure that you have this educator mode, the word on is visible. And then you're going to click on these nine dots and then select Torrent. Thanks so much for catching me up. I did I did see your text and I got it figured out. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm scrolling back through chat to make sure that I didn't miss anything. I see a request for the link to sign up for summer training. I can probably go work on that and have it ready. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, Bakit, your question about how many students could be entered, do you mean in the other version that's a Canvas integration? Okay, um, I don't know that there is necessarily a limit. So anyone who is registered in your Canvas shell should be able to access that version of Tourit. Good question from Laura here. How does she access the beta torrent site? Um, there's a there's a URL address. There is a URL. Uh, let me dig in my email to go find it. That will be just a moment. But also, while you're waiting, something else to digest. Here is the um, OER source that you can use with your students in Canvas. 
<coughs> That's the one I was saying that um, your students could create their own virtual field trips. Okay, off to go find the beta link. I think I found it. Ooh. Thanks. Thanks, Nina. And I think if you're not sure what your login credentials were for beta, I think that email came directly from Jeffrey Bruce. I don't think we sent that. So this would be the email address that you're looking for in your email. So how's it going out there? By a show of thumbs up, how many of you have been able to successfully integrate a panorama? Two? Ali, were you able to create an account? No. Try to I got a kind of screen this time. And uh it's I still I put like 16 different symbols in there and they just won't take my email for I mean my password for some reason. Um did she try <laughs> Ali? Did you try to log in before you got your confirmation email? No. No, I no, I because it's the the information was in the confirmation. The login oh. uh, site was in the, uh, it said to join here and it was in the confirmation. As also to go to the webinar, same page. A confirmation for the webinar. So she got the webinar confirmation right. and then she went. So did you, were you able to submit um, an account request? Submit account request. Or is when it I, like- when, when I clicked on your uh, highlight uh, that you had there to, join to it or to yeah to apply for it mm -hmm. uh, that was how i i got the screen then that um uh, that shows how to, and i hit the educator button to show that part and then i went to all the screens i can even give you a screenshot of what i of what it is i can i don't know if you can take my screenshot can i send you a screenshot um you can i don't know what? where to Let's Let me see um, if I can create an account for you. Well, yeah, I don't see anything in there with your name, but is it W-I-D-M-A-R? Yeah, I don't see an account request yet. Yeah, because because I can't get through. <laughs> I just want to uh, chime in here. I requested an account. Yesterday, when I um, signed up for, well, actually, the, the, it took almost like 24 hours for me to be able, I finally got the email says, you've been granted. They, they said an administrator had to look at it, so it might not come up right away. But when I got the confirmation of being on, it said, it, it recommended that you create an account. So I did that yesterday afternoon, and it was like this, this afternoon that I got the okay, and I was be able to log on. 
And see, so my, that I, might be it. See, I, I got an email from you saying that you, same thing that you did not, this was a couple of days ago, that you did not see any request. I don't know if you remember seeing my email. Yeah. Okay. So I did try, I have tried for days. And I even, as I said, I went to tech. My, uh, I, have a, I have a MacBook Pro, a 22, 19, uh, 2022 model with a new, with Apple's, uh, with their new chips in it. I don't know. So it sounds like you're not able to actually submit the form to request an account. Mm -hmm. So I put the password requirements in the chat. Are you, did you double check to make sure that the password you're typing in is meeting all of those? Oh, yes. And I okay. even, they even provide you with, I, I took the provided one that the site provides you. I clicked on that that one and, and accepted their uh, their password, which was, uh, you know, just a jumble of things. Mm -hmm. uh, over nine, over nine uh, little objects. I, I can't think of what you call those things. All right. Um, let me see if I can create an account for you, and we'll get you into Torrid. Okay. <clears throat> Hey, um, Diane, I'm going to reach out and see if I can get access to your information. Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Let us know if you have any questions tinkering around. Um, Laura, merging account. Jessica, I think I figured it out. Okay. I had to log out and come back in again, and then it, it fixed it. So thank you. Great. <laughs> No, I'll check and make sure. Dan, what are you up to? What's your question? Okay, so first of all, I, this is really cool, and I'm excited to be in here playing around with this. And I did create a turret sample using your panorama, um, which is awesome. But I also have a question about your InSpark OER screen. So that screen where it, the Open Skill Tours tool tools. And it says sign up to teach, and that opens up a new window where you have to enter info. So signing up for teach open OER within Spark OER is separate from Infiniscope, correct? It is. And is there a cost to use these OERs? I mean, if we're not going to use your Argos and we're not enrolling students in your platform, but are these OERs open access? Are they allowed to be used in other platforms? Um. If I sign up for an InSpark OER account, does that allow me to use some of these resources as OERs, embedding them in the Canvas courses that already exist? Or is that a separate, this is a separate program? Uh, it's a separate program from Infiniscope. Um, mm -hmm. It's still within our, it, it's still within our ecosystem, but it's a project that I'm not involved in. I just hear things. <laughs> um, I think there is a cost associated with it. I just can't recall what it is. It seems that it's related to number of students. 
Um, let me see. Like a license, we buy a certain number of licenses to access and use. For instance, the chart it tool seems pretty interesting also. You know. Maybe. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if we can pull Melon. Because uh, these are also really helpful tools for students to build their assignments. Yes. Uh, so the planet tool, the chart it tool. Um, and then I really like the idea of it if you could give students access to make their own tours. Mm -hmm. And then I liked on the website um, seeing that there have been some teacher created virtual tour or you know panoramic site visit type things. Um, so where to where to where if somebody created one, where do they submit one for consideration on your website? Um, for for Infiniscope, the teacher created right. virtual tours are submitted literally to us. Like you send us an email and say, hey, I've got a tour that I'd like to have considered. And then we have a rubric that we apply to it. Okay. Uh, we can always share that rubric out too. And we do actually do that over the summer. Um, because we really want to make sure that, you know, there's there is some alignment with NASA science in some way. And that it uses, you know, really good place-based learning pedagogy. Yeah, so, I, I, I literally just got back from Seek, the space yeah. and conference, and that would be a goldmine to take one of these three hundred and sixty panel cameras into some of their exhibits and shoot that around. Obviously, you'd have to get uh, <laughs> and use some of that imagery because they don't want you to record. But if you took photos in some of the exhibits, and you could do a walk because I've seen one that's a walk through of Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Uh, that NASA has similar type things. So they're self-guided virtual tours, if you will, but that we're using imagery uploaded. Um, this is very cool. This is a neat new tool. I really want to sign up for the summer professional development. Did you put that link in the chat yet? I think Sina is working on creating that registration page right now while okay. we speak. Excellent. This is cool. <laughs> All right, so I think Mel is going to be able to hop in. She was here yesterday. She's going to hop in here for just a minute, and she can talk a little bit more about open skill. She's way more knowledgeable about that side of the house than we are. Uh, yeah, Renee, I think I have it. The link is, here we go this one. Whoops. There you go, Renee. Yeah, me too. It was it was very cool to see that tour created because I'm like, oh, I've been there. It's very hidden. Uh, the next question I was going to deal is the rubric. Happy to share the rubric. Let me see if I can go find that. Um, he is looking right now. Diane. Um, Ali, I sent you a, a direct message and also an email. So if you could check those and let me know if you are able to log in, that would be awesome. Yeah. All right. Turns out Mel doesn't have the information about the OER stuff in Spark. I, that's okay. I, yeah, we can, I, I certainly am interested in both of these platforms and products. Um, and I, I am a, a administrator involved in my school in previewing content and getting approval and, and purchasing. So I would be interested in seeing additional info about how to create, you know, a, a, a demo account where I can bring people in and demonstrate this to them and figure out pricing if some of this does cost. Yeah. It's worth it to at least um, maybe do the contact us piece. 
um, at the bottom of the page. If you click support and down at the bottom, it says contact. Um, maybe you can have somebody chat with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. The other thing I'm looking for is the rubric. <clears throat> Um, we use Renee's question about Gigapan. Um, we use Gigapans in the in the content that we create, like more elaborate virtual field trips, but we have not used them in Tourit. Um, that said, I mean, Gigapans are URL based, and you can, in fact, put a a web page, you can embed a web page. So it's possible. Oh, hey, Mel. <laughs> Hello, I'm hovering. I'm sorry, I don't have uh, in Spark OER answers. It's been a while since I've been on the team, so I'm not sure exactly what the details are now. Okay, that's fine. I've pushed, I've pushed them to the contact form. And so maybe uh, Lucien or Anne can reach out. This is a great group of people. So they're very patient with us as we go out and look for resources and all the URLs. So you don't have to stay, Mel, but thank you for being flexible and hopping in anyway. Okay, rubric. So rubric is incoming, but please note, this was our very first iteration of the rubric. It will change for this year, for this summer, but it at least gets you a good, a good idea of what it is that we're looking for. <clears throat> um, Kathleen, did you by any chance get an email? Password resets will go to your email. Uh, Renee, yes, you can use the tours on a Chromebook. It's basically just a web page when you publish a tour. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Kathleen, you're using your AOL email to log in.
Everything looks right here. Um, <clears throat> are you on a Mac or are you on a PC? Okay. Um, do you know how to do a hard refresh? Okay, that one is on a PC. I think it is control F5. Looking at you, Leon. What did I do? Did I unmute on accident? <laughs> no. Hard, <laughs> hard refresh on a PC. Oh, yeah. Usually you just have to hold, like, hold down the power button for five seconds, 10 seconds. No, on, a brow on the browser. It's Control F5, right? Um, well, it depends on the browser because some of them you have to be in developer mode for that to work. Uh, I think Chrome, you have to have like the dev tools open. If it's Firefox, um, it's a little bit easier. Let's see if I can remember how to do that. All right, well, while you're doing that. So Kathleen, if you've done the control F5, let's see if it works. Uh, go try to log in again. And if it doesn't, do you have another do you have another browser that you use on your device just so we can test it out? Mm. Um, <clears throat> Jennifer, loving it like these, finding all these new resources, it's awesome. Um, we do a little bit in our training segments about um, the citation and, um, uh, why is the word escaping me? Creative Commons licensing. Thank you, Creative Commons licensing. <laughs> I swear my brain went out the window this week. I don't even know why words don't come to me. Um, but we do a little bit about that too. Jess, is there any chance you remember what time the Torrit training this summer is on the 27th, 28th, and 29th? Um, we didn't put it on the calendar yet, so we will make it up as we, as we go here. So I think we normally do it, I say across the lunch hour. So we either do a start time of 10 or 11. And it's an hour and a half? Hour and a half. So 10.30 to noon or 10 to 11.30? I don't know. Let's ask the people here. They get to decide. Y'all are here. You get to decide what time will we hold our training? We are on Pacific time. I'm sorry, what were the dates of that again? June 27th, 28th, and 29th. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Diane, what are we not doing at NSTA? <laughs> so we're working the NASA booth. There's a ton of hyperwall talks that are happening. We're doing a share a with um, N. LSTA. Say it again. NMLSTA. Yeah. Okay. And then we're doing the, what are those called, Zena? Speed talks. Speed sharing. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. So we've got one for Turret, and then we also have one for the new authoring tool. Is that everything that we're doing? So far. 
Okay. That's everything we've been roped in thus far. Ah, cool. Yes, you will. All right, so I don't, I don't feel a lot of passion about a time here, so. I feel like maybe. West Coast time, we're talking morning, late morning? 10.30, 10.30 to noon? That uh, would be Pacific time. Pacific time. Yeah. So what is it, 1.30 to three Eastern? Late morning works. That's good. Laura and Dan are in. <laughs> so should we say 10 o'clock Pacific? I like 1030. Okay. 1030. You got it. And Diane is confirming she thinks that's what time we did it last time. That's great. Yeah, Jessica, thanks for responding to my private chat. And yes, I will. I'm already signed up to go to the next week's sessions as well. Ah, uh, good. This so a little heads up, Sina and I will be here on that Tuesday session. Wednesday, we will be on a plane heading to NSTA. So we will be handing the mic over to some other folks on our team. So don't be heartbroken if you pop in and we're not here. I mean, you should be heartbroken. Yes, we are doing, and Laura asked me uh, just now, sorry, Laura, I'm gonna call you out because it's a private chat. Um, are we doing <laughs> authoring workshop this summer? Yes, we are. Um, we are gonna be doing a beta test early summer. We'll be doing, uh, uh, and by early summer, I mean beginning of June. And then late June, we'll do another one that's more community wide. Um, so Sina, Sina, Ali is still struggling. Also tried another browser and same results and same message. Okay, so I actually, I created an account for you, Ali. So you shouldn't need to um, fill out the form and, and do that again. So you should have gotten a confirmation email. And then I sent you a separate email with the password that I set up for you. And I can show you how to change that once you are able to log in. So were you able to get a, did you get a confirmation email? No confirmation email. Okay. Um, so, uh, Ali, if you want to pop into, um, a breakout room with me, I can, I can get you into Torrid. So I'm going to put you into breakout room one and I will you, see you there. Can Kathleen join you also? Cause she's still struggling with, with getting in. Um, I, can we do one at a time because I have her password and stuff and I'd like to keep it confidential. Yep. yep you okay. got it. All right, so Kathleen, hold tight. So um, Ali, you should get a pop-up that is asking you to join a breakout room. I need you to find that and click yes. Ooh, I think she's there. Yay, I'll be back. Okay. I'm here to hold down the fort. All right, I am going to go ahead and drop the survey into, I know everybody has, most people have probably not realized this actually past our, our time frame. So if you need to run, here is the, so this is for Turret. Those of you that were here yesterday accidentally received this from me to earlier today. Now's a good time to fill this one out. I'm going to follow up with all of you with the right survey for yesterday's session. So these shouldn't take, I mean, these are less than five minute sort of surveys. So it was great to have you guys all here today. Um, please go in, play with Torrit, 
ask us, ask us questions, whatever it is that you need. We're always here to help. And we're hoping to see you guys this summer for some additional training. Okay. Oh, don't see the survey. I post it to everyone here. I'll post again. Here's the survey. The link he says ASU Question Pro. Jessica, should I just uh, get an email for my account? Here we go. What does he say? Uh, it we're, we're trying to communicate via Slack and there's some miscommunication here. So we'll that's have okay. to handle it. We'll have to handle it offline, Diane. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you though. I appreciate it. I'm all set, sure. ready to go once I get it straightened out. Awesome. Well, good okay. to know. I'll see you at NSTA. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Diane. All right, bye. Yeah. All right, bye, Susan. Hi, Jennifer. Yep, thank you. Thank you, bye. Bye. Ooh, good question, Erin. Um, you actually can't, but that is a really interesting question. Hmm. I have to file that one away as an option in the future. Thank you, Paula. Kathleen, stay on the line with us here. As soon as Sina's done in the other room, then we'll have her work with you. And Tanya, Jennifer, Bakit, either of you have any, any of you have any questions you'd like to ask? Okay, that's great, Tanya. Have you been able to easily throw media into Torrit? 